On the Wado Radio Show. Yes, it's DJ Wado. It's the Wado Radio Show. It's yeah, music, yeah. Music is ministry. Yeah, yeah. Mr. I Will Be, Fidel, is with us on the line, man. What's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your boy Fidel, man. I'm excited to be here, Wade. Appreciate you having me, brother. You know what I'm saying? Man, I, I, I like them ad-libs, man. It sound like you was about to spit a verse. Yeah, you know. You know what I mean? I've been in the lab so much, man. It, you know what I mean? I wake up in the morning writing music now, nah, man. So. Do you really? Yeah, I, I, I'm in the studio every day. Like, I, It's definitely become something that it's, it's become like you know what I mean? When I used to want to go to the NBA, and I just stand, mm. st- you know, I used to go to the court. I was in the hood in North Memphis. I used to just go to the court every day. I try to do the same thing for the studio because, you know, I love making music. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I don't, you know, a lot of times we don't think about, we don't know how long the opportunity to do music will last. You know what I mean? And and I just try to keep that in mind and just try to have fun with it. It's therapeutic. It's fun. You know what I mean? It's it's all that. So, you know, I try to take advantage of that, man. It's funny you say you don't know how long the music is going to last because I don't think a lot of artists really think about think about this whole situation from that standpoint. Yeah. Most of the time, dudes is just they in the present. Yeah. Maybe they thinking about the next project, but they don't think, man. This might actually come to an end at some point. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 in my, in my, just in my journey, man. I, I've met so many artists that hit such high. Pe- it's just they've hit peaks. They've hit. I mean, just done stuff. Um, amazing things. And um, and one thing I've learned is that it always come to an end sooner or later, man. This mug ends, and I've learned that when every artist I ever met who did music. And then, you know, they, they took it for granted. They got tired. They got bitter. They, they let it go. Whatever. They always regret, like, not um, maybe going harder or maybe not appreciating the moment more or having more fun with it. Because when you in it, it's so easy to take it for granted. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, it's so easy to take it for granted. And so, you know, a lot of times, because I've met guys who's done amazing things and, you know, I've seen... You know, their peaks and their valleys. And I've seen, you know, them years later try to come back and do it. And, you know, it's, it's you know, it's kind of they know it's over, but they miss the feeling. They miss the moment <laughs> that music created. And, you know, I, I it, it just it reminds me, man, that doing music is a privilege. Like God allowing us to do music. This is this is a privilege. This is not something that, you know what yeah. I mean, that we have to be able to do it. You know what I mean? And so for me, it me- music means a lot to me because of what I, I give credit. I give music credit for um, for just like keeping me out of trouble, for keeping me sane as a youngin, like all yeah. my life. Like I, I feel like music is like a friend. You know what I mean? God gave us music. You know what I mean? Like you, you, you know, if you had a party, if, if, if the house, if there's a bad mood in the house, I grew up in a in a rough home. You throw a song on it, change the whole atmosphere of the home, no matter what. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and like for me, you know, I was a hot head growing up, man. If I couldn't handle myself, music was something that I always threw on. You know, even to this day, it don't matter. Like, you know, songs, we relate to songs often more than we relate to people. You know yeah. what I mean? And so, yeah. you know, so yeah, that. So music mean a lot. Music mean a lot. I, I'm grateful. You know what I mean? To God. I think everybody feel like that. I think that's why iPods, you know, we all keep music on our iPods. We all, you know what I mean? All got favorite songs that we go to on the weekends at night you know what i mean it's the feeling that it give us man that that we love and we cherish you know what i mean and and my music is like it's such a feeling like i always say man feel me before you listen to me when you hear my music feel it first then listen later man because you know i want Mm. you to feel it i want you to you know what i mean i want you to vibe with me you know what I mean? Like, vibe with me. Like, because that, for me, that's what music has always been to me, man. It's been a feeling. Yeah, yeah. You, now you, so you grew up in North Memphis, man. How did that, that music scene out there influence you, man? Because obviously, from a hip hop standpoint, and yeah. even going back before that, from a, like a blues standpoint, um, and even rock and roll, like, Memphis has had a lot of influence on the, just the world musically. Yeah, like when when I was in North Memphis, I saw the the uh, the inception, the 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 beginning of Three Six Mafia, who most people know yeah. now is just Juicy J. 
Like Juicy yep. J, like people don't know this man, but like like Juicy J was rapping in like '89, man. Like you know what I mean? Like he, no, I knew I, that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know him in '89, but like I know he was rapping in '89. Yeah. And so like like now when you know when I hear when see to see what he doing now it's like dog like this dude's longevity has been crazy but I saw the the beginning of Three Six Mafia so I saw the I saw these guys you know what I mean just just take over a city like I saw them performing at schools um, pushing CDs out they you know pushing you know music out they cars I saw them create a sound. Like they created their own sound, but but now when you hear these artists now, a lot of the the music right now sounds like, um, sounds like it's inspired from Three Six Mafia, from Cash Money, from from No Limit, Master P. It, it sounds like it's from that era. See, I'm from the era that I feel like inspired a lot of the music that's out now. That's why my music sounds so like now, is because yeah. Three Six Mafia. I was there when they created their own sound. There was nothing else in the world. That sounded like Three Six Mafia, and what most people don't know about me is my journey of even doing music has been like that. Like I've always been a type of guy, a type of artist that like I know I have a unique voice, and I've always loved that about myself. And I've always been committed to like, man, I want to use my voice to the fullest potential. Like that's part of the journey of just being an artist and creating art, you know. And because I saw Three Six create their own sound, I saw them. You know, do things that nobody was doing. Now they, I also saw a lot of people get beat up because of the influence of their music. I saw, you right. know, they made tear music. Tear the club up. <laughs> yeah, tear the club up, break it. Yeah, they made music that called that caused problems, dog. If we went, yeah. if we was at the dance, we was at, at at you know, and they threw on one of them songs. We knew we was about to thump. Like when we went yeah. to parties, we had we had to be strapped, like because we knew. The music that was playing, but just you know, it also the soul of feel, like being like 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 you know being in Memphis, like soul is important, like you know what I mean. Like I, I don't tell, like a lot of people don't realize, like Elvis' house is in Memphis, like his his like his mansion, and so like I drove past his house every day in the tenth grade, like because his house is like you know people travel all over to come see his house, and like you know mm. he's he was inspired. By black music, by soul music, you know what I'm saying, yep. and so Memphis, that soul is always there. Like it's a uh, Memphis is a man's uh, like like city, you know what I mean? Like it's like a man's soul city, and so like you know that 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 always made that made me the type of artist I am now. Where you know I like people to feel my music, I like to have fun in my music, and I like you to I like to say things that I actually care about. Like personally, like my feelings and my music, because that's what I come from. I come from watching yeah. people do music about what they felt. You know what I mean? What do you feel? Like, what's your lifestyle like? You know what I mean? So, like, that whole thing, you hear it all in my music. You've always heard it all in my music. Right? That bounce, all of that is all things that I come from. Yeah. So, I know you got into Christian rap when you when you hit Tulsa, you know, sketch Sketch did the interview with you, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago yeah. about that. But how did you get from Memphis to Tulsa? Yeah, well, I got to Memphis to Tulsa because my parents split. Like, so basically, mm. like, I'm I was in Memphis. Like, I'm I'm from North Memphis. My my father was is a pa was a pastor, so I'm a preacher's kid that live in the hood. So I have this 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 weird. It's like it's like it's this you know I like I I grew up in a black church traditional black church Memphis is a very black African American like I mean I grew up there was no white kids in my school in Memphis none I had white teachers but I had no white friend I had no white friends I had no white um, students in my school period mm. and that that was the type that's what I come from so but my um it's also my my family was deep rooted there um, and so. But my father, man, like my father, he left, my, like he ended up leaving, like when I was around 15, 14, well, no, I, when I was a teenager, up, a teenager, he just up and left and moved, like him and my mama split, and so my mom moved to Tulsa, she just up and left, we moved to Tulsa, and, um, and that's how I got to Tulsa, literally, and so I didn't, when I first got to Tulsa, I didn't, that's not when I originally knew about Christian rap, it was years down the line when a movement was created there, that I was kind of like, I was like a part of helping, not musically, but just serving. 
I was more so a part of serving a lot of dudes because I, when I saw this movement, because of what I came from and seeing 3-6 influence the community, I knew the power of music. You know what I'm saying? Like, I knew the power that, that music, you know, like the fact that, that music will make cultures collide. When I got here, uh, when I got to talk, when I got to Tulsa, people knew who Three Six Mafia was. And when I got to Tulsa, it was majority white, and they all knew who Three Six Mafia was. Like they knew it, like I knew it. You know what I mean? Because and I realized, man, music really, you know what I mean, crossed those boundaries. But so my parents split it was, you know, it was a very tough time for me. Music was an outlet for doing that time. Again, it was something that I, you know that I really drew to and I also realized I could write when I moved here because I, I took a college level writing class and I and I found that I was like a natural in it and like that kind of led me to realize that like man I could write and um, and I, I wasn't rapping I didn't grow up rapping I wasn't in school rapping I wasn't in high school rapping I wasn't doing that like rap was something that I down the line I kind of realized that I really really loved and I had a passion for it and so that's kind of how we got to Tulsa after my parents split and I got a part of a, a culture of guys that was just rapping. And I saw them go through a lot of the same things CHH is going through now. Like where, you know, they, they evolve and then, you know, you kind of start off one way and then you realize, man, we want to reach more people. How do we reach more people? And I saw people get too extreme. I saw dudes go too far, get in situations that were really, that they never, they to this day, they haven't come back from. I saw some dudes, you know, evolve into different things to pastors. I saw some guys leave the faith. You know what I mean? And that was the experience that really humbled me and made me realize that just because you Christian rap don't mean your faith is intact. You know what I mean? It don't mm. mean that you, you know, you, um, you, uh, like you living for the Lord. You know what I mean? That's still a lifestyle that got to be lived after that. Um, and so like, you know, for me, you know, kind of like, you know, all of that has kind of made me the artist that I am today that kind of moves the way I do. Like people ask me what how do I move the way I do is because I came from a culture. I saw three, six, create their own lane, create their own sound. I saw them do all of that. You know what I mean? And so like, like, um, I, that is how I move now. I move in a way to where, like, I know I'm grateful for all the different talents in CHH. You know what I mean? I'm grateful for all the different movements, the styles. I love them. I appreciate them as art. But I, 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 I as me as an artist, feel like I'm, I, I'm still always on my own journey. You know, I partner with my peers, but I'm always on my own journey of being an artist and, and running the lane and, and being it and, um, doing what i feel in my heart to do so so yeah that's good bro yeah your, your father um dibbled and dabbled in a little bit of music too right my father was one of the most talented men i i met in a church because he was an amazing singer you know what i'm saying he was an amazing singer he was an amazing um um preacher and he was uh and he could play the organ so, you know, like he could like he could go anywhere, even to this day, like he could go almost to any church, you know what I mean? And, 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 you know, in the hood, like he could he could run it like he he grew up in the church. He grew up his my mom, my, my grandmother, his mom was huge in the church. You know what I mean? Even though she wasn't a singer, she was huge in the church. And so my father kind of honed his talents through there. You know what I mean? And so I could never sing. I could never play the organ. You know what I mean? Anything like that. But I saw the the talent of music in my family. But my parent, my family, they didn't like rap music, of course. Like, you know, like mm. growing up in traditional black, like rap was never OK. You know what I mean? Like I was never OK. But like, <laughs> you know, that was just a thing that, you know, it was a soul type of thing. Like you, we just connected with rap music. So. So you so you had this weird dichotomy of your dad playing the organ and you loving three six mafia. Yeah. Yeah, like, I love 3-6, No Limit, uh, Master P, that whole movement, like, I was, I was, a, I'm, a, like, I feel like I'm a child of that, like, this, the, the, what, like, that movement, being in the South, the A-Ball and MJGs, like, the Southern music, like, I'm a, I'm a child, I'm like a, uh, musically, when I say I'm a child, I mean, musically, I'm, I'm an offspring of that, you know what I mean, and, and that's why Southern music, like, now I feel like dudes, like music right now, um, 
music right now is is like to me everything that I grew up off. Like like when I hear the Atlanta style, like all that, like that stuff that I came up off. Like those are the guys that I feel like they're inspired by the same people I am. You know what I mean? And that's why now I love music just as much as I ever have because I love where music is. Like I love I love the groups like Social Club. I love the Andes, the people who I feel their music even before I listen. Like I feel like they rap from a feeling standpoint, they're creating a move. Like I like, I like, I like music like that. That has different emotions. It's fun sometimes. You know what I mean. It gets deep sometimes. Like you know, like the Thizzles. I love Thizzle. I love those artists and stuff like that. That I feel like kind of come out of like the mixture of of creating a blend of everything. Like you, you have your your southern influences, but even from the south, like the south was influenced by East Coast music, and now the East. Is highly influenced by southern music. Like you see that now, you know what I mean. You see, like now, if I go to the East Coast, wait, I come up there with you and do my music. Like it's familiar to them. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. I got artists from the East Coast. They like, send me something because now, like the southern influences just become worldwide. Like trap is almost like the new boom bap. You know what I mean? I don't know if you like that way though. You know what I mean? But, I'm, you know. You bugging out, bro. I love trap music, dude. <laughs> I, I've been, I, listen, man. I've I've been, I don't know if you say that to be funny, but I've been saying trap is like boom bap for a long time, and people didn't understand why I was saying it. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think there's a, uh, I think there's like an aggressiveness to it. There's a, yeah. there's a, um. There's a vibe you get from it, particularly, and I'm not talking about like the EDM trap. I'm talking about like the stuff Ti started doing in like yeah. you know oh three oh four like yeah. that hood, you know that kind of trap like that. Yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying? True. Like to me, that's, true. that's almost the same type of stuff that you know the dudes from New York when they was rocking over the premiere beats and it was yeah, gritty and no, they I was, agree. I you know totally they was agree. talking like about I, things that was going I think on in even the hood now it's the same feel like the internet I think the internet has caused that too like I think now like you know it's the I same feel with just a like, few more snares you know, and some 808 before my access was like like if I was in the south so, like if I was in and in, 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 you know now like if I woke up and I lived in Milwaukee you know my access was what was at the you know the store at the mall or the record store yep. now yep. I can go straight to the East Coast, get who popping over there. I can you know, I can go down south, see who popping over there, I can go to the west, the midway, I can see who popping everywhere. So now like dudes get instant influences. You yeah. know what I mean? And this is the other thing too. Because we got iHeartMedia, tune in radio, you can listen to any radio station you want. Yeah. And because Clear Channel owns so many stations. The, like, if a song is really working big in one market, yeah. they put it in all the markets. Exactly. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's, you know, it's more universal in a lot of cases. Like, yep. You know. Yep. I mean, even, even, even me, like, right now, I, I like a lot of stuff that's out. Like, like a lot of times when I talk, like I, I was talking to my dude, um, my friend, my friend B, I known him 16 years. He, you know what I mean? He hit me up. He came back in town. He just had a youngin. So he brought him in town so I could see him cause so I could meet him. He been my dude for years and we talked about music and he was naming, he was talking about how much he don't like these new style, like Amigos and, 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 and a young thug. And, and I told him stylistically, I said, I get a lot of these artists. You know what I mean? Because they are inspired by they are inspired by a lot of the artists that I came up in and they have a blend of like everything. So now, like back in the day, a lot of southern artists didn't use metaphors. But metaphors mm. kind of came from the east. So now you might have a dude who he kind of remind you he might remind you of somebody from like um, he might remind you from somebody from like 99 in the South, but now he does metaphors because of what he heard Jay-Z do in, in, in 01. You know what I mean? Yep. And so now you have now, like even in the, in the, in the, in the South, like 
you know, there's certain things like the influences from even you see now, like the whole, you know, that West Coast sound, uh, you know, like I got a song on Flaw called Made It Out The Hood. That mug is straight like DJ Mustard. Like I, I, even though my sound ain't DJ Mustard, I love that feeling so much I had to do it. And on my album, you hear, you hear that like, like I have, even though I'm like a Southern based artist, there's moments like on this record I got called Proud that like you feel more of like my my inspiration that came from like a you know maybe a uh stylistically a east coast artist you know what i mean like maybe a blueprint era you know that type of thing and that's because you know the internet has caused us to kind of listen to different styles you know from all over you know what i mean and you see it in chh you see you know now like you know back when cross movement you know, they was straight East Coast, but when they did, huh, what, huh, 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 what, like that was when that, that Southern kind of came in and they felt yeah. that influence, you know what I mean? So, yo, it's, you know, it's funny. It's still people mad that they did that record. Yeah, I know. I know. And that, and that to me, honestly, honestly, that might be their biggest song, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that, now, honestly, the reason people, the reason like I, for me, people ask me why I make records like Work It Out, um, like why am I walking like I'm changed now, like doing records like Off The Shelf. Like, the, the truth is everybody like a song that makes them want to move, makes you want to bounce, yeah. makes you want, everybody likes it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, everybody wants, like you go to a wedding, dog, you ain't trying to sit there and listen to the... You know what I mean? You want to hear what's going to make you do a chant, what's going to make you, you know what I mean? And and for me, that music spins in my head all the time. That's what, Me and Flame did a song called What You Mean last year. We got a song called What You Mean. You play it on the show uh, off his record. And, like, when I when I actually did the record for that, like, I, I wrote that record from a standpoint of wanting to make, a, um, of wanting a bounce that I felt was missing from like CHH, like a bounce, like a bounce swag that was missing from CHH and it came out. And my hope when I did that record was for people to feel like in their car to just give the UG face. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. you, everybody also like hearing something that make them give the UG face. Like, uh, you know what I mean? So. Well, let me say this. That new Erica Campbell record, is that same kind of vibe, but just from obviously she's coming from a different standpoint. But it's the I, to me, I mean, I'm not saying she heard y'all song and say y'all I'm going to do something just like this. I'm not saying that, but I think her attempt was to create that same type of feeling that y'all created with that record. Yeah, yeah, like like to, um, it when I heard that record. Very rarely do I hear records, and I'm like, I wish I was on it. <laughs> like, I, I don't hear like I, I honestly i couldn't tell you a record that i've heard like you know what i mean like i i very rarely hit over when i heard that record and i saw it off your tweet i was yeah. like erica campbell i don't know you but i'm supposed to be on this record <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i'm supposed to be hey, on er this record hey, erica combo felt the same way and put a remix out the same day you said what I said Erica Combo felt the same way and put a remix out the same day. Oh, okay. I ain't heard that. <laughs> oh wow, yeah. yeah. I felt like I felt like man, like I'm supposed to be on this record. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. This is this is a dope record, man. Um, yo, you mentioned you mentioned earlier, man, how you in the studio every day. You you know you grinding, you treating us like an athlete. You really enjoying the music, and then I'm saying that the album is titled. Flaw, fight like a warrior. I'm thinking that sounds like that might be birthed out of that that whole mentality and mindset you got right now. Yeah, well, uh, warrior might have been a good idea, but they actually fight like a winner. You know what I mean? Fight oh, I'm like sorry. No, no, no. You good? Hey, wait. Fight like a warrior didn't make the the think tank. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> 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 no, uh, fight. No, no. But you're right. It's fight like a winner. Yeah, it's it's the like fight like a winner. Flaw was was kind of it was the mentality of knowing that you it was really the fight to I, I i struggle embracing grace god's grace period 
Like, so th this is the spiritual side. Like, I, I struggle with embracing God's grace. Like, and, and a lot of it is because I grew up around everything else around me other than grace. Um, and so I, 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 it is a fight to, to embrace grace. And so what happens is your imperfections, your flaws, your, your heart, like your, your, when you're injured as a person. You know what I mean? Whether your your heartbreak, whether like I like you talked about earlier when my parents went through a divorce, like there's times when you're like you you get cut deep and it's just you're not at a hundred. And we all go through times like that. Whether it's when we lose somebody, when we get sick, somebody, you know, just all types of things, you know? And so and just being sinners, being born in sin, we're just not perfect, you know? And so mm. flaw, that whole flaw concept is that us embracing God's grace in the midst of our flaws, understanding that we're a winner, even though we don't win all the time. So winners lose, period. Jordan lost. He did not win all the time. He was a winner. We, we all know Jordan was the definition of a winner. Period. Like we, if we just being honest, I I know some of y'all love LeBron. He's great. He the Jordan is the definition of a winner. Like like, and so like, but he lost. He did not hit all his shots. That that did not make him a winner. And that same concept as a as a person, we have to remind because this is what I've learned. When we think we're a loser, we devalue ourselves. Mm. We let our mm. imperfections, we let our flaws devalue us. We 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 say, oh, because I didn't do it all right, I might as well just throw it all away. And it's like, nah, like you still a winner. Remember that. So act like a winner. You know what I mean? And so uh, the, the title track of the album is called Flaw. And the hook goes fighting like a winner. No, nah, I ain't perfect, but I got a purpose fighting like a winner. You know what I mean? And, and like and just understanding that, that that like for me, a lot of this record is therapeutic for me. It's it's me looking at things where it's like, man, like. No, nah, I, I ain't perfect, man. Like as much as I try to act like it, as much as I do dope selfies and and do dope photos <laughs> and, and my videos, one of the, the angles right. Like, no, nah, I ain't perfect, but I still got a yeah. purpose. You know what I mean? And and I want yeah. people to to um, I want I wanted to push something. I wanted this record to kind of embody that that concept. And so you get records like Fight Like a Winner. You get records like Off the Shelf, where I talk about being committed to God regardless you know what I mean like and um and you know I got records like like love the feeling you know what I mean like with me and social club you know what I mean so I got a lot of records that kind of embrace just grace just having fun you know regardless you know I'm still gonna live God because God loves me and I'm grateful for his grace now see if you would have sent me your album when you said you were gonna send it <laughs> I probably wouldn't have got it mixed up and said fight like a warrior. Yeah, you're right. You right. You I'm right. You, I'm just, I'm yeah, just yeah. saying. I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah, you're right. You right. You right. <laughs> I, I am I'm guilty, dog. I'm guilty. <laughs> I'm guilty. Yeah, but 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 on the strength though, man, you you got you got a record with um with KB. And you also got a record with uh with Tim Tim Halpern from uh from American Idol, man. KB, this is the thing about me and KB, and I, I don't know, KB probably remember, but I, I met KB like years ago, and when I met him, I walked up to him, he was there, this is when KB was, was gangster Christian rapper KB, you know what I mean, <laughs> when I first met KB, he was gangster Christian rapper, and I, I was in Tampa, and I was at uh, uh, Flavor, uh, not Flavor Fest, but I was at Crossover, and I and I did like a little small set, and him and his and his and his dudes was there, and like you know I I, I had seen him before that before, but I walked up to him, and I told him I, I was like dog like you the future dog. I told I don't know if mm. you remember this, but I was like you like I because I had followed KB. It was a point where he had no songs out, but I saw his live performance, and I I was blown away. Like I was like man, you know I love this guy's energy. And I told him, and even before he, right before he signed the Reach, even though I didn't really know him like that, but every time I see him, I'd be like, "Dog, you doing something? You working?" And um, and this is years. This is before Reach. This is years before Reach and all that. And so it's funny because it's kind of come full circle because last year, 
we had been talking. We also saw each other on uh, the blackout circuit. But, you know, we had talked. And how, you know, just how much we appreciate what each other's do. And there's things that what I do that KB really likes. Uh, he wanted us to collab on some stuff. And I wanted to collab with him. And honestly, he was the first person. He he was one of the first. This is probably one of the first records I got done. I didn't know if everything would be executed right. So I didn't necessarily know if it come out, when it would come out. But uh, we got everything done. And, like, the record has so much. Like, like the, the record is, like the energy is through the roof and it's called no mm. ceilings like so it's talking about god ain't got no ceilings grace for a sinner you know shout out to jar rockin they mix my album you know what i mean they, they i love them folk you know what i mean but anyway so um but uh yeah so me and kb got a crazy record called no ceilings grace for a sinner the the record is crazy it's gonna have my whole album i call it that new swag like it's gonna have your it's gonna have you sitting back in the car wearing your shades putting on your best clothes you know what i mean cleaning your shoes you know what i mean going out in the summer you know it's gonna have you doing that and no ceilings gonna if you got a drop top it's gonna have you take the top down if you got a sunroof it's gonna have you like pop the sunroof if you ain't got that you gonna let down the window hang out the window when you hit a record you know what I mean? Like mm. a flaw is that new swag. Like I, I, like it's 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 just it's it's to me it's contagious energy. So I'm excited about it. Shout out to KB. You know what I mean for doing the record, man. We got a banger. That's what's up, brother. That's definitely what's up. What about uh? What about how did how did collab with with Tim Halloperin come about, man? Um, uh, shout out to my man Tim. I've known Tim for years. Like it's funny. Like I met him at Canica, and. Uh, we do shows together because I do stuff at Kanika, and I ain't gonna lie, we talked about doing a song, but you know you do that with a lot of artists. This is the crazy yep. thing about all my features on my album. All my features on my album, all the artists, like it was done like quick. Like when I hit Tim up and was like, dog, I got a record for you. Um, and I said, dog, I got a record for you. Dog, he hit me up. Like he had it done like like quick. We had it knocked out quick. He went on the road, went overseas, and I was like, I need you to uh, finish off the record. Right when he got back, he touched down, he got it done for me. The dude is amazing. Mm. Like, vocally, like, it's one of them songs as a rapper where you, you know, how, as a rapper, man, you make songs, and every once in a while, you like, dog, I think he might have take over this song. He took over the song. Like, his, his, what he did on the song is crazy. It's powerful. It's called, uh, it's called, it's kind of called Surrender. Uh, I call it You Know, that's the track title, but it's Surrender, and it just talks about even fighters have to surrender, you know what I mean? Because I talk about fight like a winner, sometimes us fighters, I, we go so extreme, we, we forget that we also, you know, are, uh, have to be s people who surrender, you know what I mean, to God, you know what I mean? And and so that's what the record kind of embraced, and it talks, and it, I just pour out my heart on a record, you know what I mean, and just talk about just, you know, just my heart's cry of being imperfect and embracing God's grace. So I got you. I got you. Um, man, one thing that I, I've always thought was dope was your whole, I will be everything they said I could not be Yeah, movement, man. Yeah. That's it. Um, and, yeah. and I know we've, cause we've been doing these interviews for a long time. You know what I mean? But, yeah. um, for some of the new listeners and fans, who may not have understood what that was birthed out of, man. Just, you know what I mean? Just just talk about how you how you kind of came came up with that, bro. Yeah. Well, like, I will be everything they say I could not be is is was created some years ago. It was actually a part of my first official record. And honestly, it was it, it was it was inspired. It it came you know, I hate using cliche terms like this, but now years later I actually was saying, man, I feel like god gave it to me because I, I was literally just going through a torturous time personally like it wasn't like people were doing stuff to me it was just internally going through a lot of things and having to deal with things that just sent me to a low place a low place there's some low places you go to as per like you it's only you and god there like it's nothing that it's nothing else It's you and god and when you're in those places it's like being injured as an athlete it's like mm. you sitting on the sidelines and you can't you can't play. You can talk, but you can't play. 
And if you get out there, you're just going to keep messing up and you just got to chill. And so we don't like a lot of times we don't want to chill because we, we, you know, we like, hey, we like faith without works or or, or, or we, we, we say all these things. And it's like, nah, dog, you hurt, man. Like, like, it's like, dog, I always tell people, man, when, when my, when, when I'm with like the little, when I'm with some of my youngins and they have a breakup with a girl, I'm like, dog, you need to chill. Cause if you go out, you ain't going to be thinking right, right now. You know what I mean? Like when, like 50% of homes end in divorce. Like when kids come through homes that's divorced, like they injured. Like it take, it's you, some of us never recover. People get molested. Like you have like sex trafficking girls are coming out of that. Dog, you you injured. It takes time to get through that stuff. Some of this stuff mm. you will never totally beat. You will just all oh, you will just get better at fighting it. You know what I mean? Some like there's some like I always when 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 Paul said talked about the thorn in the flesh and now there's a lot of different studies of what it was. I, you know I hear all types of things. Whatever whatever it was, it was something that did not go away. And he said, in my weakness, he said, God's grace is sufficient. And I don't, it's not that I think everybody has a thorn, but a thorn and stuff like that. I, I'm not saying that. But I know in my personal life, just if, of what I, and you hear this in my music often when I talk about personal things. I've learned that there's certain things in my life, man, I might, I probably will have to deal with for the rest of my life, man. And I will have to always lean on God's grace for that. And as much as I often people want to come, like, want to be like, man, they're perfect. They want to put the world's problems on their back. The truth is, man, we get injured, we get hurt, and we need help. We need hope, man. Just simple as that. We need God's grace. And so I will be everything I said I cannot be with something that I was going through so much. I was so overwhelmed that I wasn't thinking straight. And that was the phrase that mm. kept going through my head. Just flat yeah. out. Like that was the quote yeah. that kept that kept. It wasn't like it wasn't some rap. It was this wasn't a cool thing for me. It wasn't like I was just trying to be cool or come up with a phrase. It's like this is real to me. This is this was the situations that that go on in family. This is the family secrets that that, that they don't talk about. The uncle that molested the the youngin that that don't get out. This is just that she got to carry that now because this is that type of weight. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And it also goes to the the young and trying to make the football team and he too small. You know what I mean? And he mm -hmm. but he want to play sports. Or the girl that don't feel like she cute but she want to be a cheerleader. You know what I mean? Or the dude who want to rap. You know what I mean? But has no connections and feeling like he want to do it and he trying to figure out a way. So we go from those extremes because I've been at all those places, you know what I mean? And so but and so for me when I say I will be, it means something. You know, I will be everything they say I could not be. It's more than just a catchphrase, man. It means something. It's personal. And that's why I call myself Mr. I will be. You know what I mean? Because for me, I I've learned that there's things that we go through as people that nobody will ever know. But us and God. And we got to fight it ourselves with God. Like, you know, nobody going to pat you on the back for dealing with it. You know what I mean? It's your journey with God, man. And it's real. You know what I mean, and so and and that, that's kind of what it came out of, and and like that's why you hear my music. I often feel like music. I, I'm a, I like shopping. I like stuff like that. But I often feel like that stuff is is a lot of times that's just outlets. That's stuff. That's hobbies. You know what I mean. That we do. You know what I mean to handle the stress of life, man. That's why I'm grateful for music. I'm grateful for fashion. I'm grateful for things like that. But I know what they for. You know what I mean? They outlets. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I go grab a Chick-fil-A lemonade sometime when I feel bad, man. Tell them to double cup that <laughs> mug. You know what I mean? I hit Chipotle, like double meat my Chipotle, man. You know what I mean? If things ain't going well in the weekend, you know what I mean? Like, I, you know, I also celebrate, you know what I mean, with, with, with some combination fried rice on them suckers. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Oh, and I, you know, but like this is just, it's the balance of like going through life ups and downs and just being real and being like dude like like there's a lot going on in society right now man like it's obvious yeah. look at what's going on like if we don't have if we can't extend if we can't look if we have perspective right now like we gonna go we, we we gonna make bad decisions we gonna make rash decisions we gonna let our emotions get the best of us like the country is in a is in is the country is at a tense right now you know what I mean? Like, like people are feeling pressure. People are being feeling cheated right now. They're feeling like nobody cares. People don't feel loved. All of that stuff, man. And all of that is embodied in I will be, man. Like, I, you know, it just comes out of that. And so I, I, 
it, it's hope and grace, man. That's what I want people to see when they see, you know, I will be hope and grace for all, man. And, and you know, I, I, you know, so that's what it is. So you asked me about I will be everything they say I could not be. And, you know, I just gave you that real, bro. <laughs> hey, man, on a, on a less, um, I guess, funny note, man, I know, um, you know, even though you grew up in Memphis, I know Tulsa is a big part of who you are. You know, you're involved in the community out there and everything. And, um, man, this, this situation with Eric Harris, man, like, yeah, you know, man, what's the, what's the, what's the tenor like in the community, bro? Well, what's crazy is I think more people knew outside of the state. Like I, I, what, I, I was at out last night. We shot the, um, music video for off the shelf. Like, um, yeah. My, shout out to Wado for playing. He was the first DJ I gave the record to. Shout, thanks for playing on the record. Th playing on the station. We were shooting a music video, and I was out there. I had, you know, I had. We was out there. I had some some dancers out there. Some people out there. We were just kicking it, and I brought it up, and everybody didn't even know about it. Wow. Everybody didn't even know about it. And Are so, you serious? Yes, everybody didn't know about it, and 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 one of the reasons because I felt like it got it it became like because the um, people outside of the Oklahoma grabbed it and ran with it like a lot of times communities like Tulsa man like things like that get controlled quick because of how the how how the the pecking order is here mm. and so a lot of times like it that's the power of the internet man like as much as we got so many uh, you know Twitter gangsters and all these other people you know comment gangsters and all that that we complain about one of the things about social media and uh, that I appreciate is there's some things that's not hitting anymore. You know what I mean? And so that was something that I personally saw saw a tweet about it from a national organization before I saw it in my city. Wow. Before I saw it here. Now, I'm not saying that's because it wasn't on the news. You know what I mean? I've been on the road. I, am, I, I we like me and my wife. This has been an extremely big, busy season in me and my wife life so we haven't knew but i saw it on twitter before i saw things ringing out here you know what i mean wow. and so for me like i tweet uh, you know I, i've seen that like just seeing that and i feel like tulsa is one of them places where i always feel like we like they have to be careful here like and um because like tulsa has a history that a lot of people don't know about that's really oh, man, bad y'all's history is crazy it's crazy and it don't get talked about a lot because a lot of a lot of reasons because there's not a lot of minority ownership and leadership in the city and so a lot of times like a lot of things don't get talked about and uh, there's a lot of bitterness um um from you know from african americans here like and it's passed on you know what i mean and i'm an import so you know what i mean like and i i've i've caught on to that you know what i mean and so you know it's one of them things where um um I, i'm personally like when i read about it i was like man this is disappointing um but i do think that because i i believe in oklahoma and Tulsa, i do think that this is something that um like uh that I don't know if it'll end up the way people want, um, but I think that this was more something for national than almost for our city. You know what I mean? Because mm. if the cop was, if the cop, because the cop was not white, it would have been a way bigger deal. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> but I think because he was, um, he was a minority, I think it, it had a little less, it was more about police brutality. It was more about police force. Um, and so I think that that is something that's more of a national thing that we're all concerned with. And we're saying, hey, dude, I grew up, man. We ran from the police all the time, like all the time. Like like when, mm. I, when I it was one of them things I, I've seen dudes go to jail because police planted stuff on them. So in my yeah. head, it was like if the police pulled up, I'm running. Like I was you taught out. that like run, you run because you don't know. If they trying to meet quota or something like this was in the hood and, and this is why I was like when I was raised, like when you raised in urban areas, you like, hey, it wasn't about a white cop or a black cop. It was cop. You know Cops, what I mean? Period. And, and so it was like, dog, like you run. And so even now, even now, as I've gotten older, I'm a grown man. And I still to this day, when the cops get behind me, I, dog, something in me gets concerned. 
So I, I get this whole thing, you know what I mean? But going back to Tulsa, I think that that was something definitely more that fit that that um, where I feel like it was a, a, an, another example that we we just have to we just have to reevaluate like how cops use how cops use force force because honestly man like you know cops are underappreciated they're underpaid you know what i mean there's good cops there's bad cops there's a lot of things going on and honestly in our society now like like there's so much going on now that now when we go home and we're on the internet we don't know what people are watching like people watch people watch stuff stuff and get offended more now like than they used to like you know like mm. people people are on facebook watching like you can in, in a span of 30 minutes your emotions can change five times because of five different posts and three tweets you know what i mean <laughs> somebody like a bombing just happened overseas uh, uh, uh um uh, a cop just got accused of of killing this person a college football player just right rape, raped the girl a, a, a girl just touched a teacher just touched the student like it's just you're watching and, and like before you go and you watch the news and it's like that's when you got all your depression now it's like now it's like you know as people we're i feel like we're all having to adjust with a new way of intaking information and i feel like we're all having to kind of reevaluate how we function you know what i mean and how we deal with the fact that our kids have more information, you know what I mean, of how people on the street have more information, like, and all of that stuff. And I, I, I think it definitely has our whole country at a place where, as people, we're learning how to deal with each other differently um, from race relations, socially, economically, everywhere. We're having to redeal with everything. I mean, in the next three to five years, we'll probably have to be talking about same sex marriage with all of our kids and explaining to them why we have concerns about marijuana use. You know, our parents mm. never had to do that. You know what yep. I mean? Like, uh, you know, like, you know, so, you know, those are all things that like we're all going through right now. Um, like in our country is just in a, in a place where there's just a ton of things, you know, going on. I, I was in St. Louis in December, with this, when he had his outreach out there, when Lecrae came out there, prop, Derek, Flame, I was out there. I got to spend time with people in St. Louis, like sit down and have talks with people that were in the hood with Mark, the new Mark, uh, Mike Brown, who were there, like, like, like saw it, witnessed it. I, you know, I, so I got to do that, you know what I mean? And I also get to come back to Tulsa and I have white friends who parents are racist. Like I have, I get, I have, I have real conversations with people who have legit problems and have to like I have to exercise patience and having conversations with people because they don't get it. You know what I mean? Like I've had churches bring me in to discuss race. Like, like how to integrate youth groups. Like like I not saying this is stuff I know, but I've I've lived in such big I've lived in I've lived in such huge like um just uh different demographics like i i get to have conversations and learn people in a way that um everybody doesn't get to learn it so i have some of the weirdest conversations the toughest conversations with people you know everything back from trayvon you know what i mean having people like like people's totally being on George Zimmerman's side, like having a conversation with somebody. A lot of us just talked on Twitter. It's, I sat face to face with people who and had dialogue with them about that, about Mike Brown, about all of that. You know what I mean? And, and so having those real conversations, it, it really led me to a place of, of understanding God's grace. Like, 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 like even more because I realized how different somebody can have a, a perspective than mine because of how they were raised. You know what I mean? Like people are yeah. fighting to keep their comfort. You know what I mean? We have perspective that's different. And I, that's why I come back to the point of, of all being flawed. We all we're not perfect. I know we have we, we, we see things and we're like, this is wrong. A lot of times because of people, were, how they were raised, like the communities they were raised in to them, the cops are never wrong. You know what I mean? We, we to us. Dude, we've seen them be wrong. You've never seen them be wrong. You know what I mean? And so it's another it's another mad reason why I feel like grace has been so heavy on my heart. Cause I when you when you talk to people who they just don't get it, and your first thing is like, how in the world don't you get it? It's like that we were raised different, different communities. 
Like, like extend mercy, extend grace. He, if that's a blind spot, that's a flaw of his. You know what I mean? He's still like, like he's that don't mean he going to hell. He don't get it. Maybe that's why you in his life to extend grace to that brother, to be around him. You know what I mean? And and, and piece by piece, I've seen people. I have people around me who who have, have has seen the light by being around me. They're not used to somebody who dresses like me, who thinks like me, who does rap music, ex like functioning my like I do. Like and and like white I've had white people around who spent so much time with me, they've said that oh, you've changed the way I, I never spent time with black people like this. Like, you know what I mean? Now, uh, somebody who's of the culture. Like I am a hip like the way you see me dress, I dress like that, like no matter where I am. Like I, if I'm in the like it, I I stand out like everywhere I go, like I got my own style everywhere I go, and so when I'm I'm with people like white I'm with white sheltered people Hispanic Asian no matter I'm with different people and I get to have these conversations, and and I, I literally come to the point after seeing all these Facebook posts and seeing these these ignorant comments I'm like man, like like people that I care about have some of these comments and I'm like. Man, we all got flaws, man. You know what I mean? Like, mm. like we all got flaws. Sometimes, it, like, uh, people ask me, there's not a magic bullet. Uh, uh, the biggest part is conversation. People need exposure. That's one thing I love about music. It brings us, it makes it, it forces, like, like I was talking to some dancers the other night, and we said one of the things we like about art is that we don't care what you look like. Can you do it? Can you rap? Can you dance? Can you draw? If you can draw, we going to sit down with you. And as we sit down, you get to know me better. I get to know you better. And we we need more of that more than ever. And this and honestly, the millennials growing up, they they have more of that, you know what I mean, than than ever of of being integrated. And and the only thing that they a lot of things that they have in the carry are what parents are passing down. I'm from the south. My uncles and aunties are all from Mississippi. I've, I've I've lived in communities where the KKK was the police. I've 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 been face to face with real KKK. I have uncles that live right behind the KKK who have like in Mississippi. Like I I, I know what it's like to have real hate. People people who truly hate you because you're black. You know what I mean? Uh, it, I, I've lived in those places, and 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 in the fact, the the hard thing that we have to understand is that sometimes that that's just their flaw. That's like that. Sometimes they, who knows if they'll come around from that. But you gotta think the the young boy, the friend that you got who's who been on pornography for four years. Sometimes you wonder, man, like you know, he need grace for that. You know what I mean? Mm. And and a lot of times. The, the, the truth is, is that we, a lot of times, I, I know for me, I had to realize I put certain things on a higher plane of being, of being more wrong than others. But sometimes we got to realize that if we can get to that place of, 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 uh, I know for me, if I get to that place to understand grace, it helps me to have patience. I'm not patient. I'm working to have patience in this. This is not, I'm not telling you stuff that I just do. I'm saying this is stuff that I'm working to do, understanding, like living places now where People see black people like once every six months. Like they have no, they have, they don't have interactions. The only thing they know is Snoop Dogg. You know what I mean? Or, or, or the, 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 the Vaughn fights with black dudes fighting in the hood or, or the, you know, the, the reports on Chicago. They don't know anything. So every time they see a dark skinned guy, they get scared. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You know? And so, but yeah, so. You know, just just living in Tulsa, like Tulsa is one of them places that I I, I personally I love the city. Um, you know, I, I love my it's a you know it's great people here. It's great talent. It's a lot of untapped talent here that I try to reach out to a lot. Uh, there's not a lot of outlets here. Kevin Durant has done a lot for Oklahoma. The Thunder have done a lot for Oklahoma. Shout out to the Sooners. You know what I mean? Shout out to the Cowboys. You know, ORU Tulsa's here. Like, we've got a lot of different talent here um, in Oklahoma, you know. But I'm really happy the Thunder's here because the Thunder has brought Oklahoma together like nothing else ever in history, in my opinion. Nothing else brought Oklahoma together like like the Thunder. So, Yeah, but do you, do you think Durant's going to stay? That's the real question. I, 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 I Personally, I, I, I don't. Like, I, 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 would, I want him to stay. But I don't – I went to a game. Uh, me and my wife got to go, like, on the floor, like, you know, about a month or so ago. Um, somebody gave us tickets. I went out there and I watched the game. And I saw Westbrook, and I was like, man, like, 
Westbrook, it almost feels like he wants his own team now. Like, it, it feels like it. And, and Durant, um, I think it would be great if he stayed. Um, but a part of me feels like, you know, New York is going to be calling. I, you, 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 dog, I know y'all up there on the East Coast. I, you know Phil Jack is sending text messages right now, man. You know what I mean? You know, you know they want to get him to a bigger market. And, I think and, the place you got to worry about is D.C., bro. I think yeah, that's where you yep. really got to be that's concerned. That's true. That's another place. That's another place. I, I, I they, they, like, they, they, like, yeah. I mean, everybody want to go home, dog. You know, you look at LeBron, like, you, the dudes want to go home and play for their city. You know right. what I mean? And so, like, you know. So we'll see, man. I'll say this, dog. The fans in Oklahoma, dog, are amazing, dog. Oklahoma, we are some of the best fans in the world. You know what I mean? And, and it's just because it's like really good people here. Like it's it's very it's it's family oriented people here. And the Thunder, um, they I think they represent Oklahoma really well. You know what I mean? And hey, and, but look, uh, man, I feel like if if y'all lose. Durant and maybe Westbrook because Westbrook might leave too. I think that would be Westbrook worse than when leave. Cleveland lost LeBron. West. You said what? I said I think that would. I think if y'all lost both of them, it would be worse than when Cleveland lost LeBron the first time. I agree. I agree. I, I, I will like, say I this. Feel like I feel like if if they left, the team would have to move, bro. Uh. I think it would. I think it would deflate everything. Like. <clears throat> Cause think about this, y'all lost James Harden, traded him away. Yeah, and he's like, I mean, you could argue he he was he's the MVP this year. You could make a great argument for that, right? And he's killing it. Like Houston's killing it. The Thunder might not make the playoffs. I mean, we got to find out. Well, I guess by the time they hear this recording, we will know. But you know, uh, but then. If then Durant and Westbrook turn around and leave, bro, they moving back to Seattle, dog. <laughs> hey, dog, I got a lot of fam in Seattle. A lot of people in Seattle. Shout out to uh, Pastor Judah Smith. They definitely want the Thunder to come back. So, like, 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 <laughs> they, 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 they well, like, y'all hijacked I don't, them, bro. Y'all stole them. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get around anybody in Seattle without, without, I'm around a lot of people in Seattle often, and they always make sure they jab me, um, for, for the Thunder thing. Always. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, it's one of them things where I, I, you know, anything's possible right now. Anything is possible. Anything's possible. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Well, uh, May 12th, fight May like 12th. a winner. May, May 12th, Flaw featuring KB, Derek Minor, Social Club, Tim Halperin. Um, shout out to Jai Rockin for mixing it, Masson, uh, Masterin. Shout out to uh, Jita. Jita produced Majority. I think Jita did 90% of it. I got to join. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder. I, I'm glad you brought Jita up. Yeah. Because I, I that was one of the things I wanted to ask you about, man. Yeah. Uh the chemistry y'all got, bro. Like, where the heck did that come from? Um I, well, it can, it came from me always feeling like Jita. I to me, Jita always made the style of beats that I felt needed to be made more, right? And so I think it was is early last year. I told I gave him a call. I said, "Gita, you about to be my guy." <laughs> no, it was actually probably the end of twenty thirteen. I think, and you know he didn't believe me. He, I think you know he might have heard it before, but I was like, "Gita," and so I bugged him so much that he started realizing, like, "Dog, he Fidel ain't going nowhere." And so, mm. like, you got Jason's record, Preacher Man. Uh, shout out to Jason. Like we we like like that that was something we did. That was actually originally uh Thizzle came to me and Thizzle was like, Hey, I need something for Fallen King. And uh we originally did it and I was like, I got one and Thizzle and and it didn't fit it didn't fit Fallen King. And so I told I went to I went to Jason and said, Jason, Thizzle crazy. You know what I'm saying? This mug is a banger. And, and Jason first heard it, he went crazy. He was like, "Dog!" Now we did the like the beat. 
Um, but but the rest, Jason got Monty G. He had D Flow hop on it and add other stuff. And Jason and all them, they executed the song. Um, um, and and so that was kind of like the the beginning when we first started cranking. And then you know we had the record with Flame. What you mean? We had other records that we've done. Um, um, for other people, but like we we just work. Like Jeter just he basically like Drake to forty for me right now. I work with other dudes mm. like Steve T and other dudes. I work with any producer, but Jeter right now is he works in a way that I just love working with him. You know what I mean? And and um and he he just has a, a style that I really like and organically draw to. And and so we just that we be making like we 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 make music we make music as much as I right now he on a break because I don't warm him out man. Like, I wore him out. He had to take a little break. Like, hey, Fidel, man. Because I hit him up almost every day. Like, hey. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, but I, um, but there's a lot of dope producers out there uh, that I want to work with. Um, but me and Jeter right now, dog, we, 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 we working hard. You know what I mean? And we just having fun, man. Just doing what we love to do. You know what I mean? And appreciating it. And, and, and just, you know, trying to enjoy the time while we here. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Well, look, man, um, Fidel, it's always good getting in with you, homie. You know what it, it is, man. May 12th, Floor, yeah. Fidel, and uh, I want to say Fidel and Friends. Maybe that could be your tour, bro. <laughs> I know, right? You know the tour coming. <laughs> Make sure you, you know what I'm saying, you, you pre-order the album. Right now, if you pre-order on iTunes, you know what I'm saying, you get to join with me and Social Club. Uh, and the joint off the shelf that's killing it at my live shows. If you go on my Instagram, dog, I got, dog, I got. This is when I was at Silver Dollar at four thousand, five thousand people going crazy. That off the shelf. I did a show in Alabama, two thousand youth going stupid off off the shelf. Wado playing that mug. It's a banger, man. So make sure you download the album. It's a discounted price right now. You get instant downloads and all that support. You know what I'm saying? The I Will Be merch coming soon, man. So look out for that. It's your boy Fidel, a.k.a. Mr. I Will Be. I Will Be. That's what it is. On the way to radio show. On the way to radio. On the way to radio show. Where it's much more music. It's ministry.